You're welcome. I've done that a time or two, too. Welcome, everybody, to tonight's uh, IED Network get-together. This is our blogging session where we're trying to move everybody in the direction of a profitable hobby blog. And uh, we're late getting started tonight, so I hope all of you who are on the outside of the film strip, outside of the green room, uh, have been patient and been able to stay with it till we get live up on YouTube. It's uh, interesting to for me to watch the success of of others. I feel like I've been pretty careful with my own career over the years to try and keep everything intact and moving forward, and yet. In spite of everything I do, reality just crashes through on everyone over the years, and uh, and we're no exception. And as you try and say, well, then now what? How do I deal with that? How do I manage and how do I go forward? And we talked about planting the seeds last night and putting your journal intact as a business tool. Your journal literally is your business plan. This is where you're aiming for, your other end in mind. This is where you are right now. And your journal is, helps you stay on track if you start trying to figure out how do I get from where I am here to where I would like to be over here. And 99% of the people that I cross paths with to begin with don't have a clue where here is. They don't have a clear vision of what they're really after. And all my, Tammy just asked me, we were having dinner, and she says, she says, how, how does this work in your head? She says, I still, uh, even knowing, knowing me for a long time, uh, some of you know I have, I have a whole imaginary committee that is how I make decisions. Uh, Grandpa Sorda, who was my made-up grandfather, and my my seven buddies that are all part of a creativity team. And what I think I've had all my life is this this gang of eight that are with me constantly. And we were talking about how fear tends to hold people back almost more than anything else. And for a long time, I've not been afraid of much of anything. I really don't mind taking on just about any mountain anymore. And that, to me, is a, is a thing. It's a subject. It's a concept. It's a attitude, a way about going at things. And we, when we plug ourselves into other people that have that same kind of an attitude, then it's like a shot in the arm for each of us as well. So it tends to keep us kind of going, and, and the mixture to me just is amazing, just absolutely amazing when we, all, when we all contribute, when we all have some thoughts that say, okay, this will work out. Now, as you've watched our shows in this last seven-year period, some who get in the shows with me live, are pretty good at contributing. And no really four women on are considered the leader of these four women. And I've watched Rebecca. Somebody's got their microphone open. Rod, it's you. Can you get your mic shut down somehow, bud? I'm trying. Okay. It's that right at the top, that little banner at the top, that little... But if he's not seeing anything, he may not know where it's at or if it's even accessible. Oh, that's true. Uh, that's true. Dr. Lou, I think you can... Can I block it? Mute him, maybe. There we go. Okay. I just I, muted Jim. Well, right, I am so maybe having that'll help. voices. Okay. I'm you having got, voices. Got I just opened Rod, it. There it goes. Now it's okay. Okay. Right 
Dr. Liu, I think you muted yourself. Yeah, I did. Okay. Am I back now? Yes. Hey, there we go. There we go. Now, I want to kind of change things a little bit and shift it to back to Rebecca Radis's, uh her post today, this morning. And it what I think so important now is when you begin to uh, what, Joni? Do, uh, Dr. Lou, can you hear me? Yes. There. I'm getting two recordings at one time. One, two people, two voices at the same time. Do you have YouTube open? I don't know. You, that's usually what will happen is if you'll end up a time shift. So if if you have, are you, if you were watching YouTube prior to getting into the Hangout. Yes. YouTube's still going. You need to mute it. Better. You're in the show now, so go up and look across your toolbar, across the very top, and see which window is YouTube's. You have YouTube open. How do I, how do I close it? You don't need to close it. You just need to click on the speaker at the bottom. There's so little speaker, uh, bottom left. You were watching YouTube prior to getting into the Hangout. Yes. YouTube's still going. You need to mute it. Yes. You're in the show now, so go up and look across the screen. Or you can just close it. Yeah, I think it's easier for her to close it. Tony, you're going to have to wrestle with that and shut, shut the YouTube side down, dear. I've got to keep going. Okay. Okay, there we go. Uh, I'm sorry when when individually you each have you have challenges technologically with stuff like that, but boy, I sure have a struggle when you don't know what to do. And we're wasting eight or ten or twenty or a hundred people's time. So let's kind of come back to it and hope that she can get that get that figured out. Uh, anyway, I want you to write down the name of Rebecca Radis, and uh, she spells it a little differently, but she is all over Google Plus. You just won't have too much. Trouble finding her. It's R A D I C E, Rebecca Radis. And it's C K A. Hers is a K A finish for Rebecca. And it's interesting that when I see people who are fairly obli obviously successful at doing what they are doing, uh, how many people just goes right over the head they just don't even pay any attention to that that's this person knows quite a bit about what they're doing and then these other people do not and so when you put Rebecca Radis in and open up a circle I want you to open up and follow her make sure you're following Rebecca Radis because that woman she really is aggressive she's doing an awful lot in the marketplace but from the second I got on the web she was right in there giving me advice early on and and obviously she's a busy girl obviously doing a, an awful lot but her I would make a little more of a comment and a little more of instead of just a three three word expression I would put a little thought into it and that's what I would then post and she invariably would react to that David Amerlin's doing the same thing. Uh, 
all these ones who are succeeding aggressively are the ones that are trying to teach us what to do and how to do it here better. They are interactive, tremendously so. They really do work with uh, even me as a beginner, even you as a beginner. So when we bump into these kind of things now, the greatest tool going on here is there's a lot out there. Ronnie Bincer should be on your list. You should be following everything that Ronnie Bincer puts out as well. Okay. Now, what she posted up today was the seven tips of how to stay motivated. And the cover that announced that stopped me in the stream as I'm looking through the stream uh, the cover was a really dark blue with white lettering and you'd have to be blind to miss it and I I mark it with blue if you watch anything and have paid any attention to it at all blue is paragraphics, paragrave and probable hobbies flagship color little bit of debate whether it ought to be red or whether it ought to be blue but I red is always the corporate logo and it's a distinctive one word usually that's a really strong red like the Marriott Hotel or Xerox IBM these guys all use those kinds of uh, banners on occasion that are red but blue is pretty much the color of our whole our whole network and I don't know if Google tracks each of us in their algorithms if they watch color choices or color frame but if they're not yet they will because all these signals are what link us all together and so as we start down into this I thought it might be really fun to open the mics back up and and I want you to take a minute and think while I'm getting I'm going to open up a PowerPoint and we're going to kind of compose this together. Uh, I want you to think about what you think are the seven the seven let's see what does she say the seven tips to staying motivated. How do you stay motivated? And so as I launch this thing up, we're going to put what we think the, the ones are first. And then I want to have her basically, uh, let's see, we can go down to construction. Where's my construction folder? Right there and we'll do one here and we'll open up a new PowerPoint all right you guys watch are you can you see my PowerPoint opening up right now I'm assuming that you can Mel, can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, it, it, you're going yeah. through the, the, the screen, so. Okay. All righty. Now, why don't you take first shot, Ron, since you've got your mic open. What do you think is one of the, one of the things that helps you stay motivated? Uh, one of the things is being in, in touch with like-minded people. Okay, how can we word that? Uh, mixture with positive people. All right, let's just back that down size so we got room for everything here. All right, um, Mel, why don't you take another shot? What else is there? What keeps you going? <coughs> Having an idea of how to get somewhere. I mean, a project, uh, how to complete it. 
a road map, whatever. Okay. So a plan, plan of action. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. And plenty of coffee. <laughs> okay. Hold the coffee and watch what I can do. You got it. <laughs> Want to live on the edge and be exciting? <laughs> I won't ever forget that last night. That was so fun. My, I went upstairs and my sister, she says, you were really laughing a lot last night. And I said, yeah, it, we had a good time. Okay, who else? Nick? Yeah, um, working on something I'm passionate about. You motivate. Working on something I'm passionate about. Okay. Okay. Lance, who else? Oh, I don't know how many other people do this, but just to keep a positive attitude, I don't really, I try not to watch the news. <laughs> it doesn't affect me. And it, except in a negative way, when because the news is just aimed at bad news. There is no good news on TV, uh, so I just kind of avoid that. I mean, there's lots of things I can find out about other uh, the world through other ways than just watching TV news. That keeps and, me from having a bad attitude. And doesn't the fact that the news has to pay its bills, and they're all worried about the ratings, and they're all trying to one up each other, and since mm -hmm. nothing but bad news sells. That's what they sell. Right. That's all they're focused on. I call it the rumor religion now. Man, they're just so hell bent on selling us a bad dose of medicine every day. And I do think we're all getting tired of it. I think we're getting worn out. Good, good comment. Okay, Deb. I wrote down a couple things. Uh, my my space. And viewing nature, especially when I photograph flowers, but that's personal. Okay. How does that? How does that keep you motivated? Is it an appreciation? Uh, appre yeah, appreciation of nature um, keeps me motivated. To, like especially when I paint, how can I duplicate what nature already has created? Okay. All right. Who else is on? Who else can give me? Uh, Rod, you got something you can throw into this? He might have gotten locked up and crosswise in the fence tonight with his. Yeah, tour. Rod. Rod's not in the list. Uh, okay. Connie Spencer got her hand up. Okay, Connie, go for it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I, actually, one of the things that keeps me motivated is. Um, Actually, praise and recognition when somebody sees what I'm doing or what I'm working on, and they get excited about it. It's very easy to, to motivate me. Okay. Anybody else see see another one? How about well, you, I've Jake? Actually, I've actually got I think three of them running through my mind right now. I'm just not really sure which one I like best. So <laughs> okay, well, let's let's run all three and see what happens. One of them is uh, the love of art. Okay. Uh, having fun. <laughs> I know which one I like. <laughs> and and the third one that keeps running through my head, especially when I do any events that's family oriented. Is the uh, the smile of a child? Wow, that's fun. Do you know something, Jay? That uh, I can't remember who I was just telling this, and so I hope I'm not rehashing something that I already just said on the show. But when I used to do the home or the log home shows, I would watch for the kids coming with the parents, and I would show them the drill first and have them each carve the, the leaf patterns with me. And oh my god, what is fun, because kids at that early age don't know that they can do that. And when I'd see some child that was just pretty interested in what I was doing, I would just stop and take a little time and draw them into what we were doing here and then try and 
open up their own passion for an artistic future and encourage that. So, boy, that's a great occasion. Those public events are pretty amazing when you can put that into place. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? I can't see all of you, so. Okay, Ron. I'm blind. Let's get Ron in there. I was the first one. He was the first one. We got. You got anything else you want to add, Ron? No, I'll stick with what I got. Okay. Okay, and if Sonia has a mic. Okay. I don't know if you hear me. Yeah. Can you hear me? We got oh, you, that, babe. Oh, that's super. It's working. That's great. Good. Um, I, I find uh, just hanging out with you people and uh, Google alone itself is very motivating. So I'm, I'm really having a good time just uh, trying to get on Google every day and it's very motivating. So uh, th that's very inspiring for me. Thanks. All right. I think that fits pretty close to what what Ron said at the top is mixture with positive people and ideas. Yeah. Let's do that. People and ideas. So uplifting ideas. Do you, do you see how mostly through the thread of what we're all talking about was this avoidance of negative, negative crap about life? And we're all trying to swim in the half of the glass that's half full instead of the perspective of everybody who's out there saying, oh, well, there's nothing, you know, life's a mess and it's terrible. All right, now let's look at what Rebecca said. And what I want to do is kind of compare what she's posted and what she said. Now, this came from Neil Stegel, and I don't know Neil very well, but she's the one, she's the one that she's quoted him and reposted it, and I didn't notice that till just now. <clears throat> Number one is hold firm to your own vision. Even when others tell you it's foolish or unachievable. So, which one? Let's go back. Wouldn't that be staying positive? Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. Second one was train your mind to focus. This doesn't mean to be blind of issues, but don't allow the problems to distract you from the objective. That's the plan of action right there. Yep. So focus. Let's go put that in a different font so we can see it better. Focus and vision. Okay, number three, grow stronger. Constantly improve your skills and your knowledge. Constantly question and analyze, especially your individual failures. That's pretty much what Sonia was talking about on the end here was uh, grow constantly. Personal interest, I'll bet that's right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number four was change. Be prepared to change 180 degrees if you're wrong. Accept your failures. Now that's not one I can think that we've we've addressed. Uh, I think that's probably about the hardest one for any of us to do. Boy, I think so too. Maybe you really one with your attitude, which was uh, the fourth one on here, like avoiding bad news and attitude. I don't think accept your failures, but learn from your failures. I don't want to accept them. Well, you're maintaining ownership of them. Yeah, I think sometimes to be able to really learn from them, you know, you've got to accept, you know, accept the failure and accept the fact that you had the failure, and then you learn from it. 
Well, and what you've been through, Jay, this this side of this last couple of years for you was, you, I always am so impressed when people are able to take on the odds and still do well. And it sounded to me like the odds were really against you as you headed into this. Yeah, there, there were a lot of odds that were, and there's still, you know, there's still a lot of those odds there that are, but, you know, you just keep striving along. I think that's one of the things that the military taught me. Okay. So we're kind of talking about all around this struggle is persistence and, and maintaining a particular goal and but we're talking about the motivation that allows you to do that so there's two subjects kind of two subjects to me that seem to be going on here number five is be reliable be there be seen be trying be consistent demonstrate that even small steps are still results delivered failures of lessons learned on your journey so the last one that he's got that he put up there was I think is is huge. Mm -hmm. All right, so that one I really, really like. Okay. Now, sixth one is complete the task. Finishing. Finishing a job requires the courage to hold your vision and ability to think through and overcome all your obstacles and persist when others would have walked off. So, hanging in there, I don't know where could we stick that. Yeah, probably under plan of action. Okay. Uh, complete. A task. Let's go back here and go clear to A task. I think it is a sequential thing. <clears throat> you get this little part done, you get the next part done, that leads to the next part, which then leads to the next part. And I really am quite careful with those sequential plans of action. To me, that's how you take on the big projects. You break them down into little ones. Yeah, you do. That how you do it, Malrick? Yep. <laughs> okay. Now, we've gone through, oh, that's the seventh. I forgot the last one. The last one is never, ever, ever, ever give up. Keep at it despite any obstacle, despite any negative con comment, and despite any negative odds. Okay, now... I wanted to ask you, because we've talked about this several times. I hit this subject two and three times a year. What's the finish of the quote that we always talk about is that when the blank is big enough, the odds don't matter? Dream. Dream. When the dream is big enough, the odds don't matter. Can you see how the word dream could overlap anything that's here. And I noticed that when when I was reading this this morning early, I kept thinking, you know what? She's, without saying it, without bringing it up, she's talking about a huge dream. And the second somebody has that dream going, then all the rest of this stuff really... You know that one goes to bed about this time. Really works out better, okay? You, you guys see that same thing? Where you're headed and what you're trying to accomplish yep. is more important than almost everything else to stay motivated, to keep looking in the direction you're going. Okay, some of you are doing a lot of chatting with your family or everything in and around you. And it's coming through in the show, so slow that down a little if you can, okay? That or mute your mic. Mute your microphones in between when you're talking. OK. 
Okay. Every time you touch your microphone, you're making a racket. Somebody's really... Sonia, your mic's on. Making a lot of noise. Sonia, can you shut your mic down there? There you go. Oh, okay. Bingo. All right. Now we're down to the point of what I wanted to make tonight. Because all of you are beginning to see how this Google Plus machinery works and how the posts go and how the stream works out. You're beginning to learn to groom your own stream, to take people out of the stream that have garbage in it and then go find people that really post positive kind of stuff. And here's the fourth number, fourth leading woman on Google Plus who's made these suggestions and reposted them out there to basically be a trigger point or an idea or concept. I think she probably did the banner or the picture up front. But every one of us could have done this same thing. We have our own versions of what helps and what doesn't help. We have our own perspectives that really do contribute to each other. When we went through each of us and we made individual comments and, and contributions to the whole, to the subject of hanging in there and persisting, uh, and I like the fact that we're, we know each other and we've dealt with each other a little bit longer and therefore that mixture seems to me to have a heck of a lot more strength and a lot more potential and would work ultimately better with each of us. And so we all have something that we could say. And remember when we made the post a little bit uh, a couple of weeks ago? And we were making it kind of a challenge to see who could kind of look at an individual subject and then figure out something to say that was related to that subject. So what I wanted to do between now and over the weekend is literally compose a post of your own. Talk about the fact that we and aim it right at plus Rebecca Raddatz. And let's all use the Discovery Studio Circle. Okay, if you're making some notes now, make sure you got Rebecca Raddus's name down and you know how to plus her in your commentary of your post. All you do is to put the plus sign right in front of her name. And if she's already, you're already following her, then when you plus that name and post it in your post, type it in your post, it will show up. It'll automatically be there. And it will put, all you got to do is click on that, and then that puts it into your, into your paragraph. And so if we each post and say on the Discovery Studio Circle HOA Hangout, we talked about the, uh, the subject that you did with persistence. And we reviewed it. And then pick out one of these subjects. Maybe it was the one that you presented. Or one that we talked about here that's highlighted. Now if you've got a way to screen capture this, you can literally come in and screen capture this guy. So let me come over here and I'll capture it. And then I'll put the whole, I'll put the whole thing up. So, but we've got it. Okay, let's just go like that. All right. Now, what I'll do is go back and uh, and launch that, and so you could kind of come back to it a little bit as well. And so, spend a little time with this. Don't do this in three minutes and then post it. 
put some thought into what you're saying and pick out any one of these subjects, any one of these concepts and talk about how it's worked for you. Now try and figure out some story to then attach to the post. I remember one time talking to my grandmother. I remember talking to a girlfriend. I remember this in high school. I remember try and attach a story to what you're talking about here. Let's pick out change. That was the lot, bottom line of her whole subject was you've got to be able to change yourself if you're going to learn how to grow. That's what growing is. Well, then you can apply it to lessons that you've learned in the garden or doing yard work. Or you can apply, oh, Jesus, there's anything there. Now, these are, to me, these are subjects that Rebecca Raddus knows this is kind of a common thread of interest on Google+. How do you stay motivated? And yet, in the whole thing, she didn't talk about the dream. There was the closest it was, was this one, uh, hold firm to your vision, even when others tell you it's foolish or unachievable. Train your mind to focus on your vision. This doesn't mean to be blind, but don't allow other people to distract you. That really is two she made, but it really is one statement. And what I'm after here now is if a dozen of us do this, I want to see what she notices and what she picks up. I'm, we're kind of testing the water here a little bit. We're talking about a subject that's very possible. All she did is grab the subject and throw it up and she's busy with other things and she just has to, she knows she's got to stay out in front of her, her groupies basically like me. But I want to try and see if together we can combine a little bit of uh, our together thinking and then see if she begins to notice Discovery Studio Circle. Now I've got the community for that. If you're not in the Discovery Studio Circle community yet, go find it and get yourself connected with that, that group, but I think all of you are. And then I want to see what happens with her interaction with us. It's going to be really, really, really interesting. Because what we ultimately have to have here is a degree of savvy of saying, well, I think this is how this works, and so uh, that's how I'm going to play with the machinery. Well, the truth is, unless we figure out how to use the machinery and we're right about how it works, we can play to we're blue in the face and not get anywhere. You see what I'm talking about here is the greatest thing going on with Google Plus is that we can test it. We can try things and we can try them pretty effectively without even having to, to normally throw the money at it. We have to throw a little time at it, but that's about it. And I really want to try and see how these connections, how they work, and see if we can influence them to some degree. Very few hangouts, very few hangouts have a full show, a full film strip. If you look at the ones that you bump into that are being held, there's one or two authorities and that's it. And I'm also looking ahead saying, you know how awesome this will be? when Google figures out how to let us have a hundred people in the show like this it's going to be just absolutely and there's no question that's where it's going to go ultimately that's what's going to happen here we're going to get a little better and a little better and a little better at this connection thing now I told Paul I want you to write down the name Paul George don't forget Paul George's name because I want you to see the kind of things he's doing with his chosen business adventure. He's paid his bills for quite a long time with just doing custom fireplaces. 
And if someone succeeded and they're up that mountain quite a ways, even if it's not, you have no desire to do custom fireplaces, uh, what Woody started to help me to try and reason out was how does he make his money? What, what are the issues? And, and obviously he, he has a way better lifestyle than most Finnish woodworkers, most cabinet guys, so he's getting paid well. So who facilitates that trading? He's a producer of a very specific, unique product, and yet it's worked for him for quite a long time. And when we can start to mix those kinds of thoughts and feelings back into what you're trying to take on, I think that's what helps us all get smarter about the trading game and the trading mechanism. And I don't care if it's doing calligraphy on wine bottles or if it's doing motor custom motorcycles or if it's doing oh hell even carbon eggshells you you literally start seeing better when you watch the right crowd that three percent who know how to make it work on the marketplace there are the producers over here and then there's the consumers all over here and of all the stuff I see all over the web all the social media stuff most are just posting to be posting. And I think that's a mistake. I can't see. I've got too many things to do. If we can't figure out how to turn this into a productive kind of a concept, I think we're, uh, we're wasting our time. Now, Woody Searle changed all my thinking because I had the drill done and I was well into trying to make it go and couldn't figure out how to market it and Oh, Lord, we were having a lot of grief in those early days. And I had my dental practice full go, full bore. I had a construction company full bore. I was playing with airplanes. I was just into everything. And yet I was still trying to figure out how to make this damn drill that I had just recently invented work in the marketplace. And Woody sent me down one day and he says, son, you're selling the wrong thing. What you need to be looking at is what you've learned how to do with that drill, not the drill itself. Now that might be the wisest thing Woody Searle ever shared with me. And, and the one statement Rebecca made in here is that you've got to be able to change 180 degrees. A lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of inventors, once they've come up with an idea, they cannot shift to what might be more productive over here. They just cannot make that change. And I've tried really hard to make the change and shift the business and the focus of the business about five or six times in our 30 year history. And right now is the greatest shift ever. I'm hell bent on having each of you grow into this masterly category, the master of a certain subject, and then we're going to package what you've then learned how to do and put that out on the web for 80 million baby boomers who are trying to figure out how to retire. And that to me, this, this, what I launched on the end of the show last night, the Handmade Crusade, is what I would like to be the center of what I'm going to do personally from now on. I'm hoping that, that I'll get your help along the way, but it doesn't have what I intend to do with the other end direction of my own life and living isn't what you have to have for yours. Whatever you pick and dream of and look forward to, we spent the whole time at dinner tonight discussing how, how individual decisions of what is your grand dream, what is the target you're really after, you're over here with your life right now and you want to try and get your life over here somehow and it's really hard to do that without knowing in your mind having a mental image of kind of which direction are you going and the real advantage for me my entire life even when I was clear back in dental school I knew exactly where I was going from the very beginning and that targeted kind of effort and activity is what gives you then the more you do that you're accomplishing that individual dream the more I think enthusiasm and passion and energy you actually 
you actually contribute. Who was it that was talking about what you produce? When you get something done, you succeed at a project. I think that was Mel. You actually pull off an individual subject and concept. We, uh, that's a tremendously motivating thing for me as well. Uh, anybody got a comment now? How are we doing? Well, one, I was uh, on an HOA today with Martin Shervington, and he talked about a lot what you just talked about, especially being willing to change. He said uh, one of the things that he had to realize when he got into Google Plus was he had to be willing to make changes in himself, and that if you if you're not willing to do that, and you're not dealing with people who are more knowledgeable than you you're going to be stagnant because you only see what's in your head. You have to be willing to look at what other people are doing and what's out there and be willing to make that change. How often do people not let you change or don't want you to change? Well, that's the other thing he said, too. There are people who, who will throw the tomatoes at you because they, they're afraid you're going to succeed, and they won't. <laughs> the fear of... Fear of success is replaced by the fear of failure. <laughs> the other way around, I guess it is. I think we're playing with one of the greatest business and world-changing devices that's ever come along. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I think about what we're doing here now more than I ever have. I'm zeroing in on more what the tools really ought to be. I'm trying to get these ebooks finished and I'm trying to get opportunity intersection finished and get the subjects of what might actually work. And we're literally begin building the framework underneath Debbie's life, under Connie's life, under Lance's life, under Jay's life. Every one of us are going to be able to use this machinery because we're learning how to we're learning how to use it and do well at using it. So has anybody got any questions about what I'm asking for you to do through the weekend? Yeah, I, I have one. Okay, Could go you help ahead. me with the spelling of Rebecca Rattus? I've looked it up twice now and I can't find anything. Um, I just can't spell, obviously. Obviously. Well, you're right in there with me. Maybe it's just me that can't spell it. Let's go. F let me go find her here quick. I got this neat Samsung device that you can go find anybody anywhere. <laughs> yeah, and when you get in trouble, you call who? My call the Apple iPhone guys and say, I get. <laughs> How come we're spelling it wrong? What's going on here? Let's go find people. Something else that creative people get ahead of themselves with. There's too many irons in the fire. Hey, Lou, try R-E-B Go ahead, Ron. E-K-A-H. Have you got her? Is that it? No, I'm not sure. I can't get... I, I don't can't have a... Not, that fast either. Yeah, I can't Mine's just now coming up. R... R-E-B-E-K-A-H. Come on, come on. And then R A D I C E. Yes, that's her last name. She pronounces it Radice. R A D I C E. Okay. No wonder I wasn't even close on that last name. Rebecca. Yeah, and you'd be surprised how many people have trouble with my name. And it's simple. Yeah, right. There's only six letters in it. Yeah, but who spells it joints? Joints. That nobody. A spells lot it. of people. Instead of the first. Okay. Instead of the first there. name, Lou, just type in her last name. Yeah, it'll under. come up. R a d i c e. R e b e k a h. R e b e k h a h. R A D I C E. And how does she say, want it pronounced? Ron? What? How do you pronounce her last name? Radis. Radis. Yes. That's a little bit. 
Ray Deese. I gotta remember that. That's a hard one to put into your brain. All righty, that's got it. Oh, look at how many she's got up there. She's got one, two, three, four, five blue blue man images. And that's her one that's up there. All righty, now I'm playing with this mostly because of the strength of her own normal position, and we're. But she's been interacting with me earlier on and quite a bit anyway. And I'm not exactly sure why, other than she just, maybe I'm new and she's picking up on new people. But figuring out how to make things work, to me, is half the battle in the economy. You can't just suddenly say, you know what, I'm going to start charging X amount of dollars for my carved eggshells, and I'm going to spend all my time making eggshells and then jump all over it, and it's going to work. I'm going... The subtlety of how things are traded in the economy is what most people miss out on. And if we start playing with this a little bit, with this subject, I want to see how much did she hit it just quick and easy, or was it something that's a part of maybe even a bigger picture? And we're going to make it a bigger picture just because we're coming back to it. And, and as we test these little subjects and these little concepts. What I'm trying to do is see, okay, then how do we use what we're doing with our posting to then draw like-minded people in our in our direction so that they begin to notice. So don't not use her name. Don't not use Discovery Studio Circle. Your name's going to automatically be attached to it, but then Google will see that all of our names are also attached to it. So we're going to kind of do this together. And I, I, got, I got so cranked this morning, I'm thinking I love testing, testing theories like this. This, to me, is half of half the quality of life living is when they can somewhat figure it out. I think that's half the battle, isn't it? I've got one question for you, Dr. Lou. Um, I was kind of... Thinking about a couple of things as far as a community, and mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I've been thinking about. There's been some people that are real interested in how we're doing things, and I thought maybe just a power carving community, just power carving. And I looked it up today, and I ran into Power Carving Institute. Yeah, did you? <laughs> okay, and I'm a follower now. All right. There's only. Uh, is that a page or is that a community? Yeah. No, that's a page. Okay. That's a page. I've got. I've got about five or six that are ready to go to work with. All I've done is just put them together. Okay. And well, I'm still not. I'm still not entirely sure about which is better for doing what. I mean, the community does one thing, the page does something else. Most corporations who are getting a really wide cut across the web are using a page, not a community. And I don't quite yet understand why the difference so yeah I'm playing with both aggressive well, uh, I was thinking just a power carving community if, I don't know power carving for profit whatever the name would be just power carving in general but if every one of the uh, people we know in the INE network just made a post on how they do it the same piece of equipment yeah. with what they do and yeah. on and on and on and people sharing people sharing this is that kind of thing could really grow once it hits on the on the mainstream and we can start hitting those people that are looking at the retirement option yep absolutely and and if you sit back and look at how things normally have grown uh, the idea that there's so many people out there looking uh, our number one niche is for the last 20 years has been the wood tool buying hobbyist. There are 22 million wood tool buying nuts in this country, men and women. They just can't say no to a new tool. And we've got about as good a one out there as you can, you can ask for. But it isn't just the high speed. It's, no. It's, it's the overall carving with power, period. Yeah. Uh, the low speed high torque, the you know. Yep. Whatever. Alan 
Alan Woods has Wood Carving Illustrated magazines as Fox Publishing, and we did a lot of. Did you ever meet Alan? Ron, do you remember him at the woodworking shows? He had Fox Publishing. Yeah, I I met him and. Um, uh, oh, that's I, right. Along with doing the woodworking shows and then doing the the Man. shows that American Woodworker had, I you know I got to meet him. Yes. So somewhat friendly competitors, I guess. There's a super guy. It really is fun. But he does one whole separate issue every year now just for power carving. And it's kind of had a battleground with fine woodworking and other woodworking magazines that don't think you should use power tools to carve wood. And I'm just I I just have so much trouble with that kind of thinking. That's that's like the person who says, Well, I don't give my kids antibiotics because the God wants them to be healthy. He'll take Ask them why they don't have a horse and buggy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just, uh, just drives me crazy. But that thinking is giving way. And when you've got 22 million potential people out there that like tools, any, whenever I spot something like that, then I start trying to figure out, okay, how best do we kind of access it. One of the issues that I'm facing right now is what in the world to do with all the alternative hand pieces out there. And I'm going to try and take on an overview of high-speed stuff and I'd like to be the person that tells us story because I think I've earned the right to do that. Uh, why this drill and why this drill and why this drill and what are the advantages and the disadvantages. All of you know we got probably half a dozen competitors all around Profitable Hobbies and, and at some point I started every one of them. <laughs> They all got their beginnings out of the roots out of Paragraph and Paragraphics and then now uh, have built their own companies and gone on. And, and every one of them will pick out some individual subject or concept and that's kind of what they, they attack. The, basically the Turbo 300 is usually it's the drill of choice. It's the Cadillac of cutters. It always has been. I think it still is. The... the uh, the NSK oilless handpiece, I think, is the best oilless handpiece, but there's some super issues with uh, with the oilless device. You can mm -hmm. use it great for doing the kind of stuff that Ken Brown is doing, and Ken loves that drill to death, but boy, if you're going to cut and carve anything else, uh, I don't see how you can play with a high-speed pneumatic tool and not be concerned about oil. Uh, lubrication for really high speed and then having some longevity to it is just a huge issue. So I'm going to tackle that. Tammy, that's what she wants me to do next is some kind of a video discourse that overviews what we're doing here. Now playing around with one of the concepts that Lance, Lance had posted or put up a couple of things he'd done about the fish scale and carving. And what I'm trying to help you begin to realize is that what's most important now, there's, there's several guys who do things and capture a video and then post it up on their YouTube stream. And they talk about everything that there is to talk about here. But if you'll notice their interaction, their number of people interacting with them is very small. And it kind of stays that way. And I'm going, you've got to realize what you're really selling here. What is the enticement? What brings people your way? Why would they want to then come? We've handled, tried to handle Jose's career as carefully as we could because ultimately I'd like to have each of you teaching. You have your studio set up and someone would come and pay to sit down with you for a day to either have an introduction to the high speed and or decide whether they wanted to buy which hand piece or not and or kind of get started with us. But underneath all of it, almost disregarding whichever high speed hand piece you like and prefer and you get involved with, um, what's going on right here, this film strip right here with each of us is still the most important part of everything that I think we've done in the last 30 years. 
I can't even imagine where we'd be now if we would have had this kind of tool. So just like the subtlety of learning to work with a scroll saw and the subtlety of learning to work with uh, a slow rotary device or a hammer and chisel even for hell's sakes. People spend half their life trying to learn how to make a hammer and a chisel work well with, with wood materials. And then all of a sudden they got a shot at metal and it just throws them. You yeah, know, that's almost have to start completely over. And then if it's going to work now for each of you, you're still going to have to do kind of what Ron and I are really concentrating on right now for him is what do I have to share? What's, what's really. What's my individual strength? And how can I concentrate on just that much for right now? Not not this this what Mel mentioned earlier. I know for an absolute fact that that's every one of our biggest problems. Every one of us are just too our our interest level is just huge. And I have to just fight with myself to put things away that I don't want, that, that I just don't have time for now. I'm moving into this last chapter of what I've worked on for 38 years and I'm not about to have some silly interest clear over here. I pulled up a page today out of my journal and the page has got a picture of two P-51 Mustangs flying together. And I love World War II airplanes about as much as anything on earth. And they have the big show at Oshkosh. And I used to have a wooden propeller made for me because I had all these airplanes in my business in Vernal. And I, I, I did a couple of shows where I'd take those wooden airplanes propellers because they looked a lot like the old, the old World War I planes. And I would engrave quotes on one side of the blade, uh, Orville and Wilbur Wright. The favorite one, the one I engraved the most, was Wilbur Wright. It says, uh, I may be a dreamer, but one day man will fly, Wilbur Wright. And then I'd say, if you buy that one, I'll put the date you soloed over on the other, on the other blade, and you can hang that on your wall of your studio or your office. And I just, I would just freaking slam dunk them at an air show. You'd go, I went to the Reno air races where everybody there is airplane crazies, and I got something to grave, something to personalize. Damn near every pilot wants the old wooden prop hanging on their wall. And I had a buddy of mine made uh, airplane props for the ultralight gliders, and so I had him just whack me out a bunch out of. Uh, Literally use spalded aspen. How many of you have ever seen spalded wow. aspen? Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's a pretty exact yeah. one. And it just had a lot of difference to it, a lot of character, a lot of holes, wormholes, and everything in would, it. Wouldn't have been good for a prop, but. <laughs> no, no, but it was hellaciously good to hang up. And, and I could have played with that, just that, all the rest of my days, because I love planes and flying. Well,. That now in my life and my world has a very, very unusual spot yet. I'm not put it clear away, but I'm working towards a particular goal that has been one there that I've had in my life for a long time. And some of those things are pretty private stuff that I don't think we need to necessarily share on the shows like this or with anyone else. That's kind of your own your own private get done checklist. But if you don't have the damn checklist, then how you, you haven't got a chance of making hardly anything work. And it's because today was just crazy. Got up this morning, I had all these to do's that I wanted to kind of wade into. But I I try and prioritize things a little and then allow for that fudge factor. When this happens, then I still can kind of move this into place and move this into place. And what I've been working on now since January is a way to draw our old members into what we're playing with right here. I've got this hellacious database of end users. I'll bet you we have two or three a day calling Tam. We have 16 people a day on the web looking for paragraphics and paragraph. That's quite a quite a number, and we've we've basically cultivated that right over 
that relationship over 38 years and a uh, hell of a lot of money spent to go out and find those people. Connie, when did you get your equipment? How long ago have you had your, your system? January of 2008. Okay. So you've had I dreamed about it for like 20 years. Oh, did you? You saw us a long you, time I saw ago? you at the Dayton Art Show or the Dayton Woodcarver Show in the early 80s, probably right oh, after you started. And yeah. uh, I lusted after it for years. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that, that's extraordinary. What a great story. That's good to have you show up tonight. I, it's, that's, a common, that's a common statement. People bump into us and just for the expense. I remember Tammy Seavers when Tammy met me at the, uh, I think it was a home, and, no, it was the Log Home Show in Denver. And Ed tried the equipment first, and then he says, oh, this is cool, but I think my wife will really like this. And I remember him handing the drill to Tammy, and she just lit up like, <laughs> that's just what I have to pay attention to. There's some that we're not doing as well with, okay? Now, when Tammy and I were at dinner tonight, I posted to Rebecca Rat. How do you say her last name wrong? Radis. Radis. Wow, I gotta work on that one. I've called her Radis for so long. It's a good thing I haven't talked to her on the phone. <laughs> what a fractured her last name. <laughs> Radis. 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 I posted a, a comment to her, and it was basically. I would like to have a test of every one of the concepts that she put up there, a percentage of how good you think you are at fulfilling each of those seven areas that then help you sustain a dream or sustain a concept and keep your vision going. How good are we at number one, at number two, and number seven? Then I said, and I want each of you now to do this, Think about which one of the choices we made and that we put the whole list, we could look at the whole list, which one do you struggle with the most? Which one causes you individually the most grief and may maybe interferes with your overall potential for your success? And I said that to me it would be a really interesting survey. Now in the Google Plus world, one of the smartest things you can do is post a concept that is a it's a survey question type post where you're asking a question of everyone that's on the stream and you're hoping to then get some kind of reaction and it will be real interesting to see what happens when we start playing with this now through the weekend we might be still too small to make even even a bump in the road here I don't know we're pretty pretty small bunch, but we're as unified as anything I see, and I'm pretty sure our like-minded relationship is quite a bit stronger than most of the other get-together kind of hangouts and other kinds of things that people are posting and talking about. going to be fun. It'll be really fun to see what we can actually accomplish. All right, any other concepts or comments anybody wants to make? I don't know what happened to Rod. We lost him. Can I make two real quick? Absolutely. Um, uh, what you were just talking about uh, was um, posting something and getting a reaction. I sent a private message. I asked Mart, uh, Martin Shervington a, a question. And he said, Ron, I want you to, he sent back and he said, I want you to post it on the, my community. And he gave me the link and I did. And I got 15 or 20 answers back from yeah. people. Mike Alton and all of them gave me an answer back. Yeah. Uh, the people do answer. Yep. The, other, the other thing I wanted to comment on is uh, to answer, go back to what Lance asked about a page. And... Amerlin, Shervington, Bincer, all of them, they all have um, a page like we have with just our name, and then they have a separate one for their community with a business page. And the reason behind it is they say to build your brand, people will trust and relate more to an individual than they will to a business. Yeah. 
So to start out with, keep it simple, keep it in your own name, and and use that rather than trying to get a business page and, and use the whole Google system. Yeah. Yeah, I it, if you spread it out too far, you're likely to have problems because I don't, I mean, I don't know how people are keeping up with a wide range of the social media platforms. I'm having a hard time just keeping up with Google Plus, much less jumping over to LinkedIn and doing stuff on Pinterest and Twitter and everything. I don't have time to do all that and then still concentrate on Google Plus and then have a life. I, I all they do that is their life. That is their life, and I I'm I got too much to do. I play a lot, and I got grandkids and family and all kinds of stuff still going on and I interact with the company and the data database a lot anyway but as the using of the tool over here we're gonna get pretty smart just the fact that we're exchanging what we're finding and what we're stumbling on to we all are finding individuals that are pretty productive on the web and so let's all keep sharing those names and watching those individual people uh, I think Google's hired Servington. I think he's actually, because of his community and his success, uh, how to Google Plus your business is going to be, I mean, it's their choice, and that's what they're doing right now is getting more businesses on, on the web. I am really excited about the community of Google Plus yourself. Put yourself in the middle of Google Plus. And so if you're not signed up with that community, please do that. Go pick up Google Plus yourself as the one that I launched last week because that's got the same kind of feeling as what Martin Shervington's doing over there with Google Plus the business because I'm convinced it isn't the business that's important. It's you that's important. You're the part that makes your art work sell. You're the part that is that's art is your expression your personal expression be it writing be it painting be it graphics be it carving be it a gourd be it an eggshell be it a, a piece of music a new song all of those things are what I think the INE network really represents the discovery the development the mastery of some subject and skill and then learning to share it in the marketplace better and that should cover every avenue of artistic human expression there is I can't think of anything that doesn't fit in there kinda cool okay anything else anybody else want to bring something up before we call it a night Got a little bit of an assignment, not making it too hard, but I really would like you to put a little thought into it. Don't just whip out six or eight words and two sentences and call that good. Let's see if we can get Rebecca's attention, okay? Good enough, everybody. I think we've got it on once. We'll catch you next week. Oh, I'm using the wrong mouse.